One of the many subjects I'm working on for an upcoming video is a look at a type of ceiling fresco that I'm referring to tentatively as the apotheosis genre. Now, I'm sure I'm not the first person to describe the apotheosis genre since scenes of apotheosis date back to antiquity. But the criteria for the genre that I'm seeking to define is a marriage of the apotheosis um, idea with Trump Loy ceiling fresco. So I will be going into this in more depth in an upcoming video. And uh, once you see a wider array of examples, it will become a lot more clear what it is that I'm trying to describe. But today I thought it might be fun to provide you with a little taste of it. So what I'm going to do now is cut to a journal entry that's about an artwork that I saw 10 years ago when I visited Parma in Italy. And yes, Parma is where Parmesan cheese comes from, in case you were wondering. Besides Parmesan cheese, refined schools of culinary arts and amazing opera, Parma also boasts this beautiful cathedral. The foundations of the cathedral date back to late antiquity, and it was elaborated and expanded in medieval times. However, my journal entry addresses a ceiling fresco that was painted on the inner dome during the High Renaissance. Okay, from my journal. My first exposure to this came from the Assumption of the Virgin, a scene that may well be one of the earliest examples of this apotheosis genre, at least as I am trying to define it. It was painted on the domed ceiling of Parma's Cathedral by Antonio da Correggio from 1522 to 1530. A vortex of gray clouds swirls in a spiral up to what looks like an oculus of yellow light. Jesus, beardless, leaps down to welcome his mother, who reaches up, arms extended towards her son. It is a bizarre scene, if truth be told. Jesus' limbs seem to flail wildly as he flings himself down towards his ascending mother. The frenetic energy seems out of place in a heavenly setting, although I imagine Antonio would have painted it thus in order to convey the great joy of the divine son upon being reunited with his beloved earthly mother, now divinized in her own right. When I first saw it, though, I had no idea it was supposed to be Jesus at the top. I hadn't even caught the name of the artwork and probably missed the Virgin who is somewhat masked by the figures surrounding her in the swirling gray clouds. I thought the figure at the top was a saint of some kind and that he was being propelled up by a wild whirlwind of divine force rather than jumping frenetically downward. And I gotta say, I kind of liked it better my way. I mentioned these weaknesses of the fresco only to re-emphasize what I've said elsewhere about the imperfections of Renaissance artworks. Again, with Antonio da Correggio, we have a Renaissance artist who makes plenty of mistakes. That is perhaps to be expected. He is provincial. You would expect his art to be of lesser quality, second rate. All the best artists of that generation would have been drawn to Florence or Venice or Rome. A look at his repertoire shows him hot and cold. Sometimes his human proportions and attempts at foreshortening are spot on, as in Ganymede abducted by the eagle. Sometimes they are off, as in Venus and Cupid with a satyr. But what strikes me is his ambition. He is not deterred by his imperfections. He aims above his level of competence and occasionally achieves stunning results. His nativity, 1529 to 30, is almost an early example of tenebrism, a form of chiaroscuro so pronounced that all the background details are obliterated in shadow. Typically, this is only associated with the Baroque, so there are ways in which the provincial Antonio was ahead of his time. Returning to the Assumption of the Virgin, again, we have a case where the genius here is in the sum total more than any of the individual parts. The whole thing taken together in one fell swoop is magnificent. Focus on any one part and you will find things to criticize. 
The clouds, for instance, look like a clump of gray cotton balls stuck together, except without the wispiness that even cotton balls might provide. But it doesn't matter. The overall effect is still one of awe. The trump loy worm's eye view, foreshortening of the figures, will go on to become one of the staples of the apotheosis genre. This sort of thing could not have been undertaken by an artist who was too scared of making occasional mistakes and awkwardness in his poses. And as always, if you appreciate the work that I'm doing here, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Ciao for now.